This exercise is based on question two of the English language paper one, but it will still be useful practice for literary analysis in the English literature exam. So let's look at what we've got to do. There's a passage in Wuthering Heights and we're asked, how does the writer use language to convey an unwelcoming atmosphere? Okay, we'll be guided by the three bullet points. Firstly, the writer's choice of words and phrases. Look at that first sentence. We have the words bleak, hard, black frost and shiver. Bleak means desolate. Hard suggests something or somebody unwelcoming, rejecting. Black frost suggests that it's a grim winter's day when the narrator would rather be indoors than outdoors. And the air makes him shiver because he's so cold. Then we have the word chain. The word chain has connotations of hardness, rejection, imprisonment even. But here it particularly tells us that the homeowner doesn't want anybody coming to his house. He keeps his front gate chained, which is why the narrator has to jump over. Then we've got the straggling gooseberry bushes. That's an interesting phrase. It might seem as if it adds a more domesticated touch to the scene. But what you might not know is that gooseberry bushes are prickly and also straggling suggests neglect, as if the homeowner isn't really that interested in the gooseberry bushes. Then there's knocked vainly for admittance. Vainly means that the narrator is frustrated. He wants to be let in, but he's not let in. He knocked vainly for admittance. And the dogs howled. Now, I don't know about you, but if I hear dogs howling, I begin to worry that perhaps they're going to get loose and chase me, which um, the narrator could very well imagine happening. So, we'll look now at the language features and techniques. Hilltop and hard, that's an example of alliteration. It's not enough just to point out that it's alliteration. You need to look at the effect. So alliteration often joins the sense of the two words. So here it emphasizes that the house is on a hard hilltop, which makes it doubly isolated and unwelcoming. Then you've got the phrase straggling gooseberry. I would suggest that the G sounds straggling gooseberry themselves snag you as you read them out. And so they're a bit like the prickles of the gooseberry bush. And then there's knocked and knuckles. That's an obvious example of alliteration. You could even say that it's onomatopoeia because um, both words make um, a hard knocking sound, like the sound he's making when he knocks on the door. Uh, and finally, you've got the word howled. The dogs howled. That's another example of onomatopoeia. So we begin to hear the dogs howling. Perhaps they sound a bit like wolves. Finally, we've got the sentence forms. The first one is on that bleak hilltop, the earth was hard with a black frost and the air made me shiver through every limb. That's a compound sentence. The clue is in the and halfway through after the comma. The first part of it sets the scene, really. It tells us that the, the place was bleak and desolate, and that the weather was freezing cold and unwelcoming. And the second part of it tells us the effect on the narrator. It makes him shiver through every limb. Then we've got the long second sentence, which is a combination of a compound sentence and a complex sentence, with I jumped over being the main clause of the complex sentence. You could say that the long straggling complexity of the sentence reflects the great difficulty that the narrator has in getting into the house.